More questions for Alexander Rossi. We will continue with Jenna Fryer from the Associated Press. See you Tuesday. Thanks. Hey, Alex, congratulations. Um, you scored your first win here. You didn't really know anything about this place, or what it meant, and now you end this long streak. You know more about this place. What, it, what are your feelings about Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a hard one to put into words. And, um, every time I come here, I, I just appreciate it more and more, whether it's for an event. I mean, obviously the 500, but whether it's this event, um, a sponsorship thing, a media thing, a, giving laps around the track, like it's just such a, it's an amazing place for us. Um, and for me, you know, being in my seventh season in, in the series and, and knowing what it means to the NTT IndyCar series as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of was hoping on the Road America weekend for it to kind of start and end the, the this drought or whatever there, but to actually end it here is actually a kind of a cooler story. So um, to be able to go up on the lift with the guys and let them experience that because that didn't exist in 2016 and there's a lot of special things about this place and um, the fan turnout here for, for us as IndyCar drivers is always amazing and, and seeing everyone with the merch and the autograph session, it's just, it's a, it's a very special thing today for sure. Does winning on the road course feel the same as winning on the oval? No, <laughs> not quite, but it's still, I mean, it's still an awesome thing. Like I got another ring, which I didn't know you got a ring for this event. So that's cool. Um, and it's just your, your, your picture will get to be on the pagoda going into May next year, which is great. Unless they change that, which will piss me off. I'll just put my own picture up. Uh, but no, I mean, there's just, there's so many little things that come with winning at Indy that you don't get at another event. So it is, it is more special than other races, but no, it's still a, a far ways behind the, the oval. After that, we'll make sure you stay up there for next year. Thanks, man. Taken care of. All yeah. right, go ahead. Um, Alex, the, it looked like there was a good amount of time where it was going to be you and Colton duking out for the win. Were you prepared for that? Do you think you still would have been here as the winner if uh, Colton continued on? I don't, I mean, maybe, you know, I think we, I think Colton and Christian and I were, were definitely like the class of the field in terms of, of pace. Um, our first set of tires was pretty, pretty miserable, actually. And which was strange because when we put on the used reds, which in theory should be worse, like the car came alive and, and we started going quite a bit quicker in Colton and we were closing that gap down. Obviously, in, he was going to have to run a set of tires that was not good for him on, on, in qualifying yesterday. So maybe it would have swung back our direction. I don't know. I mean, he's, he's very hard to beat. Um, obviously, both of us had pretty much identical race cars, so there wasn't going to be any big separation there. Um, so it would have been a, a hard fight for sure. Um, it sucks that he had a mechanical. Like, you don't want to see that to a teammate 100%. A teammate that's a friend as well, that's, that's not fun to watch. But... At the same time, we've had our share of sad, sad situations, so um, it's good to, to go our way. Patrick. Uh, TV focused, I think, about five laps to go on some smoke coming off the inside of your left rear. Was that just build up off, you know, bouncing off the under tray kind of thing? Or I'm glad I didn't see that. <laughs> uh, my next question was going to be, did they tell you? Yeah, no, they didn't, which is great. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I had no idea, so good thing. <laughs> okay, and then uh, we go back. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Being here so much, the, the, the having run so many races here, uh, does that actually make it and one more relief? But is that the, the, the frustrating part? Is that not being able to knock this off now? You don't. You don't. Now you can feel like okay, I can have a, a decent weekend and just be fine with something else here. I, I don't know that I know what you mean. Taking this, well, let's just put it on the whole season. Then. Yep. Taking the, this win now, that, that, that now, now you check that you check that box. Yep. Can you just now be far more relaxed going to the rest of the season? I mean, I don't know that we've been stressed. I mean, we've we've had a lot of good runs. Um, it's obviously been in the back of our mind, but no, I, I don't think it changes anything. You know, I think if anything, we've been kind of chilling since May. You know, the, as as a group. Um, the, the uncertainty about what I was doing was kind of gone. The performance of the car was good. Every, everyone was happy. So everything was, was pretty straightforward. So I think, you know, since then, everything's been, been pretty good. And 
Um, you know, we were close to Detroit, close to Road America, and there's been some chaos between then. But, um, you know, I think the core incentive and, and attitude and motivation from the team stayed the same. And let's talk about the team just a little bit more. How, how you talked on the podium about how happy you work with them. Uh, you and I think you hugged everybody before you even talked to TV. Uh, how much does this really mean for the team itself? Is it more for them or more for you? I think equally both, you know, this one, I mean, it's, it's been hard for all of us. It's been hard for Michael. It's been hard for Rob. I mean, the, the whole, the sponsors, you know, when we, when we started this kind of three-year journey in 19, like this, this wasn't the expectation for the past two and a half years. Um, and so that's been hard on everyone. And, and I think that it's, it's a nice reward for everyone. Like there, no one ever quit. No one ever stopped. Oh, Alex is leaving, so who cares anymore? Like that was never a thing. And I'm so appreciative to Michael and all of the the engineering staff for kind of continuing to push to give me the best possible equipment. Because um, I've been in situations in the past where that's not necessarily been the case, and and I think that that is a testament to them as people and as a race team, and and we couldn't be here without them. So yeah, it's a huge one for for myself, but but definitely for all the 27 guys as well. Hang on a second, Eric. I just want to yep. do want to mention that the People Ready Force for Good Challenge continues uh, this season in the NTT IndyCar Series. So with the win, ten thousand dollars split between yourself, the team, and your favorite charity. And my understanding is it's Lalani May Horse Rescue. Is that correct? Your favorite charity. That and the Dry Pink thing. Well, do you yes. do that too? Yeah. So just talk a little both. bit. Can you talk a little bit about both those? Yeah. I mean, so obviously, AutoNation, the Dry Pink um, campaign is. Um, you know, raising funds for, for cancer research, you know, that's a, that's a huge thing for, for them. And um, they've raised an a, a incredible amount of money um, over the years. And, and motorsports is just a small arm of, of what they yeah. do to represent that dry pink campaign. And then, um, you know, I grew up with horses and, and my mom was always into horses and rode horses. And I, loved, I just love animals. So a friend of mine kind of introduced me to this horse rescue down in Charlotte. And um, they're doing a great thing as a private kind of foundation and um, want to definitely support them in any way I can. Very cool. So uh, a good chunk of money going to both of those That's organizations. Awesome. That's awesome. Yep. Okay, Eric, go ahead. Yeah, piggybacking off of Patrick's first question, when you hear drivers talk about go winless droughts, you get towards the end of a race or winning, do you start feeling like, oh, no, what can go wrong? Or am I feeling this? Or am I feeling that? Do you play a mental game at all towards the end of this? No. I mean, I was getting pretty – Pissy, stressy with the four car there. Um, I just, it, it's not just me. I mean, there's, there's a lot of guys in this series that have had issues with coming down to the end of the race and lap cars are using overtake to stay in front. And it's just very frustrating. Um, so that was the only thing because I saw my lead go, got cut in half and we burned 60% of the overtake we had left to try and get around a car that is in last so that's very upsetting so that was the only thing i was i was stressed about um but once we were able to kind of deal with that you know i think the pace of our car was was still superior so it was just about there finishing the the last seven or eight laps of the race a couple more questions and we'll take a couple off zoom jack go ahead uh, that's the thing uh, you talk about the past how difficult to pass uh black markers uh, how difficult was it and how frustrating for you at the end of the race yeah I, I just i don't i don't understand like i get it on ovals a little bit because you can you want to try and stay on the lead lap to hopefully catch a yellow so that you can because you want to lose a lap on an oval because on, on, on an oval theoretically if you get that yellow and you can come back to the back of the grade you can in theory kind of make your way forward again if you have a good car on a road course, you're not going to restart in 24th and drive your way to, to a position like that just doesn't exist. So it's very frustrating to compromise someone's day for no good reason. Um, and we talked about that. I mean, I'm not the only one, like I said, I'm not the only one that deals with it. And I, I'm not saying that that person doesn't have a right to fight for their lead lap, but when they're able to use overtake to defend you, I just think that, that we're missing something as a series. Like, we need to implement a rule where if you're a lap down or you're going a lap down, you shouldn't be able to use overtake to defend the leader. That's all. That sounds like an off season discussion. For sure. For yep. sure. Yep. All right. Chris, Alex, you've battled against many veteran drivers for wins in the IndyCar series over the last, you know, five, six years you've been here. 
Is there anything different mentally that goes through your head when you've got someone that you've never fought against for a race win behind you three, two or three or four seconds back or is the you know, laps wind down? No, not really. Um, you know, everyone in this series is good enough to go out there and win a race. So you got to treat them as if it's Scott or Joseph or Will, right? Like, it doesn't matter. You can't take anything for granted. So, um, you know, he made sure that we, he kept the pressure on all, all race. Like, we were a fast car and, you know, he kept the gap between two and four seconds. So a huge hats off to, to Christian and RLL and, and the effort that they did and um, to get a Honda 1-2 is pretty cool. Thanks. All right, let's uh, take just two off of Zoom. We'll begin with Ben Johnson. Hey, Ben. Hey, Dave. Thanks very much. Hey, Alex, congratulations on today's win. Um, fantastic result for both yourself and the team. Um, how much momentum does that give you going into the final stretch of the season? But also, what track are you most looking forward to in the final couple of races of the year? Um, all of them except Gateway. Okay. <laughs> um, like I think I think we'll be very strong in Nashville. Um right. and Portland and Laguna for sure. So I don't think that's even a question. Um Gateway, I hope we can pull something out. But yeah, I mean I it's it's it is good momentum. It's great to to kind of put it, this whole thing behind us and just go out there and focus on finishing off the year as strong as we can. Excellent. Well, congratulations and best of luck for the rest of the season. Thanks. And Rob. Thanks, Steve. Hey, congratulations your tenure at Andretti Autosports coming to a close. I know it's got a few more races left, but what's your favorite memory or top two favorite memories of the team? Um, <laughs> that's a memory. Mid Ohio is certainly a memory. Um, I mean, obviously the 500. Like, I can't, I can't not. I mean, that's far and above number one. Um, I don't know. I mean, I was so lucky for, for so many years to drive with Ryan and Marco and they became such good friends of mine and people that I rely on in my personal and professional life, both those guys. So I think that that, those relationships, the relationship with Michael and um, Rob Edwards and my engineer, Jeremy, like those are, those are things I'll have with me for the rest of my life, which is, which is very special. Um, and, you know, I'm grateful to them for, for the opportunity. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Unless there's a follow up here in person, we will wrap things up. Stand by. Uh, but congratulations. Don't go anywhere. We got one thing for you. Maybe two things. Uh, congratulations, Alexander Rossi, the Napa Auto Parts Auto Nation Honda for Andretti Autosport winning the Gallagher Grand Prix.